The Yellow House, as it's most commonly known, goes by many names. Most call it the Yellow House because of its paint job, while others call it the Triangle House because of the shape of its yard. Others still call it the Juong House because they claim it's this particular house that gave writers the idea for the storyline behind Juon's infamous cursed house. Regardless of what you call it, the Yellow House has a terrifying story of its own, and a fearsome reputation that kept most from ever entering it for fear that they too would die. Actual solid facts on the house are few and far between. The most popular story claims that the house was first built by a young married couple in the 1980s in Ama City, Aichi Prefecture. While there are many variations on what exactly happened after they moved in, it's most commonly said that the husband had a gambling addiction and he soon racked up a huge debt. This greatly strained the couple's relationship and unable to deal with her husband constantly losing all their money, the wife finally snapped and murdered him before committing suicide herself. It was this act that would curse their beloved yellow house forever. Much like the house in Juong, it was said that after this horrific act, merely stepping into the yellow house was enough to curse a person, and those unfortunate enough to enter the premises afterward would suffer a terrible fate. But why here? Why this house? Murder suicides are sadly not an uncommon occurrence, particularly when it comes to famous ghost spots in Japan. So what made the Yellow House so special? It's said that the land it once stood on was formerly a cemetery. Even in the West, it's not considered to be especially auspicious to build your home on top of a former cemetery, but it's especially so in Japan. For some unknown reason, the land was put up for sale and the graves were moved to a different location. Various ceremonies and blessings usually accompany the rare reburial of graves, but even then, these don't always sate the angry spirits who are being moved from their final resting place. And in this case, it's rumoured that no ceremonies were even held to begin with. The graves were simply moved, and without the memorial service designed to guide them to their new home, the spirits were left restless, angry and with nowhere to return to. Supposedly, an old woman first opened a small fruit and vegetable stall on the triangular lot, but before long she was evicted, and the land was put up for sale as a potential residential lot. It was then that the young couple bought it, and constructed their dream home with yellow walls. While this is the most common story told about the lot, it's not the only one. Another story, similar but with some slight differences, claims that a married couple bought the lot and built their dream home on it, but when the economic bubble burst, the man lost everything. The couple had numerous hefty loans and, unable to pay them back, the couple committed suicide together. Other variations on the tale end with only one member of the couple committing suicide, while others have an entire family dying within the house's walls. The one thing they all have in common is that someone, and usually more than one person, died in horrific circumstances inside the house. Several years after the first couple supposedly died inside, it said another young couple moved in. However, they only lasted six months before leaving, and as you can probably imagine, the circumstances weren't pleasant. Supposedly, one half of the couple went mad and was forced to be hospitalized, while the other fled into the night. It was the house itself that had driven them mad, with the lingering malice of the previous couple who had died there, as well as the spirits from the former graveyard, refusing to move on. Another couple moved in after them, this time lasting a full year before fleeing the house. This reportedly continued with another five different families, 
each moving in before swiftly moving out again. The shortest stay was said to be only three days, while the longest lasted a year. Each time, the malice trapped in the house eventually drove them mad, drove them out, or both. And, much like the Juong movie, this wasn't limited to people who lived in the house either. It's said that one of the police officers who visited the scene of the original crime snapped and was forced to live out the rest of his life in a hospital, while his partner unsuccessfully tried to kill himself. He then lived out the rest of his life in a hospital as well, disabled from his botched attempt. Another story claims that two officers who went to investigate the disappearance of a resident who had moved in after the original couple also suffered from madness. One was institutionalised while the other went missing, vanishing off the face of the earth. Yet another story tells of three officers who visited the empty lot after receiving reports of shadowy figures inside. They were unable to find anything, but a short while later, two of them went mad, while the other suffered extreme memory loss and had to live the rest of his life in hospital as an invalid. The house really seemed to have it out for officers, because yet another tale tells of two officers who actually stayed overnight in the house after receiving reports of poltergeist-like activity. As you no doubt might have guessed by now, one went mad, while the other disappeared. Another solo officer visited the house after receiving reports of strange sounds coming from inside the premises. He went in alone to investigate, but five minutes later came tearing out of the house screaming in terror before fleeing into the darkness of night. And yet another story tells of a group of teenagers who entered the empty house for a bout of kimodameshi, a common type of game undertaken by teenagers and young people who visit known haunted locations to test out who was the bravest and who will chicken out first. Yet these teenagers were possessed after entering the house, and police were called in to investigate their strange actions. One officer ran in to see what was going on, and he was reportedly heard yelling, Who are you? Who are you? But nobody was discovered inside the house, and he, like other officers before him, suffered a mental snap and was institutionalized. Gibo Aiko, a famous spirit medium who spent much of the 70s, 80s, and 90s visiting various ghost spots around Japan, visited the Yellow House for a popular TV program on ghosts. It was reported that as soon as she stood in front of the house, she froze in her tracks and refused to go any further. Staff tried to persuade her to go in, but no matter what anyone said or did, she refused. In the end, the program had to be cancelled. That's just how dangerous the Yellow House was. A similar story tells of a spirit medium filming for another program who did step inside the property. However, the moment she did, the medium started acting strange. Unsure of what to do, the program staff tried to calm her down, but it was no use. Filming was cancelled and they had to drag her out to get help. In the end, it was said that the medium lost her memory and had no idea of what went down at the house. Various other stories popped up over the years as well. People claimed to hear tapping in the house when nobody was around, while others heard the laughter of a child on the second floor. Some saw shadows wandering the halls late at night, and some claimed to witness blood leaking from the shower. Other claims have seen a pale woman looking down at them from the second floor, and others a mother and child on the veranda. These aren't the only spirits haunting the house either, as people have reportedly seen a mother and baby on the front steps, a child and middle-aged man in the garden, and an old woman wandering the empty house at night. At the height of its fame, the Yellow House was most famous 
for a blood-stained bed that had been left on the second floor. Much of the furniture had been left in the house by the last family who abandoned it, and although the private property was technically forbidden to enter, numerous people did, especially those hoping to film a ghost for social media. This blood-stained bed was supposedly the site of the very last murder in the house. There was, like everything else regarding the house, no proof that this was true, of course, but there was indeed a stain on the bed that looked like blood, and that was enough for most people to run with the story. An apartment complex was built next to the Yellow House in 1996, and if you believe the rumours, the owners have struggled to keep tenants there as well, particularly on the first floor. After all the stories and the apparent effects it was having on nearby properties, as well as trouble selling the Yellow House itself, it was finally decided to knock it down. The first attempts reportedly went disastrously, and rumours claim that several workers died, and others went mad. Yet, in 2015, the house was finally destroyed for good, and it has now been replaced with a small parking lot instead. Whether any of the stories about Yellow House were true or not, to this day, it still remains one of the most famous haunted houses in all of Japan, even though it no longer exists. People have laid blame for the house's curse on the angry spirits from the removed graveyard, on the first couple who started a chain of murder-suicides, and others on the shape of the yard itself, claiming the triangular shape of it was unlucky and invited evil. We may never know the truth, but Yellow House has certainly left behind an enduring legacy. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.